Hi, my name is Tim Baddock and I'm going to be talking to you today about tip launch gliders. And before we get started, I would assume that by this time in the video you've seen the building portion of this by Bob Stalick. And I want to just go over a couple of building features that I believe are sort of important to these gliders uh, in case uh, he didn't mention it or just to reinforce some of those things. So number one, on the tip launch glider, you will notice that right here is the front joint of the wing and the leading edge and back here is the is the tail and what we've done on this is skewed the wing to the glide side so this wing glides right so this joint is skewed 1 64th of an inch to the right and the joint in the back is exactly in the middle now this is very, very important because it adds rudder to the airplane through the wing. And that helps the glider keep from dipping this wing when you launch. So I'm going to move it around like this and just give you a little demonstration. When you hold on to the glider to throw it, the further the glider is away from your body, the more the outer panel lifts. And this is a, a full meter glider, so you can see that's pretty far away from my body. When I spin and throw, this wing wants to come up, and the gliders tend to go over to the right too far. This helps that from happening. Also, to come back in and look at another view, the front, the leading edge joint of the stabilizer is in between the center and the outside of the boom skewed to the left. That is for a right-handed person. The, the back joint is in the middle. So you have a little bit of wing skew, not very much, just a teeny bit off center to the glide turn side. And then you have the, the skew on the stabilizer to the left. Now, some people will do it all the way over to the side of the boom, but I believe that's too far. It needs to be a little less than a sixteenth of an inch, about a twentieth of an inch, and generally what I do is put it between the center of the boom and the outside of the boom. That angle is, is proper. That also will help counteract the wing going up when you throw. So we also have a little bit of turn in the, in the rudder to the right, and between the right rudder tab, the stabilizer skew, and a little bit of wing skew, you can almost be guaranteed that you're going to have a good angle on your launch. And this is what it should look like. When it leaves my hand, it should go up like this and up like this. You keep going and it's going to come around like this and face into the wind and just go into its glide turn. And it would be, it would be pulling out right behind me. So you don't want it going straight up. You don't want it going over to the side. You want it going up, just like this, this wing coming up, spinning around, and going like this, and then to the turn. And these three things I just told you about building help it to do that. If for some reason you get the wing off-center the wrong way, you're going to have big problems and you're going to have to redo the whole thing. So that's that's some building things. Now I have my my star student and national champion Sam Smetzer from the Napa Phantoms here and uh, he is going to help out with a little bit of the trim things that we're gonna do and and my glider by the way has a remote dethermalizer whereby I've got a little servo in here with a battery and a tracker and I push the button and and it does that and it comes down. Um, Sam's has a traditional DT that is is a silly putty timer that most of you are familiar with, uh, a badge timer, and and that's what most people use on these. Or they might use something that uh, Stan Budenbaum makes on one of his fuselages. But this works very. This is very effective also. 
The main advantage to the remote dethermalizer is that if you're going into the trees or some areas you don't want to be in, you can simply pop it and you don't have to worry about it. So when you're getting ready to fly this, these gliders, they should be, uh, your center of gravity should be in the middle of the wing. Now it's a little windy out here, so it's kind of hard to show that, but, but you want it right there. You, right about there. That's where your center of gravity should be on the wing. 50%. Just measure the wing and whatever 50% is, it should be right about there. Okay, and that's a good starting place. You might end up moving the CG a little forward. You might move it a little bit back, but that's a good place to start. Also, before trimming any of these, there's... Can you unhook it? I, I just want to show the or I can show on mine also. There is an adjustment screw right here on these fuselages. And if you turn the screw out or to the left, it adds incidence. And if you turn it in to the right, it takes incidence out. So let me explain what that is real quick. Turning the screw out makes the boom stick up more in the back, okay? So, so what's happening is, is the, the boom is going in and hitting the screw and stopping. And so if you unscrew it, it's more this way, which is more up in the tail. And incidence is simply the relationship of the plane of the wing and the stabilizer. These gliders like incidence. They like to have more incidence in your traditional hand launch gliders or catapult gliders. So whatever, what I always tell people, before you take a flight, unscrew that maybe a full turn so that when you do your first launch, it might be a little loopy, but it's not going to crash. It's safe, okay? The two things in trim that will mess you up is too much, too much rudder turn and not enough incidence. Before you take a flight, now you've already balanced it, you've already taken the screw out a little bit to give you a little incidence. I'll give it a hard toss to the right, and what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for this airplane to come around the corner, and when it goes downwind, if the nose comes up a little bit, you have enough incidence. If it goes around the corner and the nose goes straight down, you need to unscrew the screw a little bit more. That'll save you from crashing these on the first flight. So I'll give it a little toss and see what it does. Now the nose is coming up right there. So that's safe. Okay, so we just had that test glide and the glider pretty much did what we were hoping for. It went around on the test glide around the corner and then as it was going downwind, the nose came up. So it's safe now for Sam to go ahead and give this a throw and we're not going to have any issues. The other thing that, that I need to say is for some reason, and, and nobody really knows why, I'm sure some smart person out there knows, but these gliders don't glide as tight on test glides as they do in the air. So sometimes you'll do a glide and it looks like it doesn't have a lot of turn and then you throw it and it turns tight. So, so just don't over put over rudder in it before you throw it because it you know if you have to chase a little farther because it went straight that's okay that's better than turning tight and crashing okay so Sam go ahead we're gonna set a short DT on this and Sam's gonna go ahead and do a demonstration of a throw so Sam's gonna spin around and throw the glider and it goes up in the air and transitions fairly smooth and now it should turn right and go into its glide. Now what we're noticing with this flight is it's not turning quite enough. And so based on that lack of turn, we're gonna put a little more uh, weight on the tip. And it's not, well it's starting to turn now actually. So it's, it's stalling a little bit and it's not quite turning enough, but it's not, it's not far off. So we just had that flight that Sam did a tremendously nice launch on and, and this glider's fairly new, so that was very safe. You'll notice that it went up, it went up a little bit steep. Sam could maybe hold on to it a little longer on his launch, but, but it went up like this and it, the nice thing was is it turned this tip up 
and it came around quickly and transitioned flat on top and went into the glide. The thing that I wasn't happy with, his part was great. The glider needs a little bit of weight on the, on the turn tip, and I'm gonna put a little weight there, and it had a little bit of a stall, so I'm gonna put a little bit of weight on here, on the nose. Now, some people might wanna take incidents out because of that stall, but I would say that you always want to fly these with as much incidence as you can and the launch was flat on top so rather than take incidence out to correct the stall I'm gonna add nose weight and the reasoning behind that is the more incidence you have with the tip launch glider in general the better you're gonna thermal the more buoyant it's gonna be the safer the glide is so so don't take incidents out unless you have to. If it's loopy on top and goes over the top and is really bad on the launch, then you can take some out. So uh, if you're a true professional flyer, you're gonna have this important nose weight on your watch like I've got. And I'm gonna put a little here, and I'm gonna put a little here on the bottom of the wing. Now what you can do with this when you get home, if this is the proper adjustment, you can take this off and weigh it on a scale, flatten out a piece of lead real flat and, and, and use CA glue to glue it on the bottom of there and that's a more permanent adjustment. But while you're trimming, the clay works great so that you can get an idea of what it looks like. So we're gonna have Sam reset the DT and do his thing again with a launch and see if, if that corrected those glide issues. But once again, the launch part was, was beautiful. So I'll step away and let Sam do this and I'll comment as he launches. Just don't set that D too, too long there, Sam. Okay, now you can see it's coming into the wind and it's, and it's starting to turn to the right and, and that is that weight is helping that we put on the tip. So he had, a, he had more of a right turn on that one and that was because we added the nose weight. I'm gonna add a little bit more on there when he comes back just to bring that around a little quicker and I might add a little bit of rudder turn to also help with that. So that, that launch was another good launch by Sam. And now understand this is only the second launch on this glider. So just from the test glide, building it properly, making a few adjustments before the first throw, it's already really close to being ready to get up in a thermal. So I'm gonna add a little more nose weight to it just to, because of the, it seems to be not quite getting around in the in the wind I'm gonna add a little bit of weight on the tip and I think I think that that should probably do it and we're gonna have Sam take another throw what I want to say about this before he does is for those of you that are getting started in this if you build one of these correctly one of these tip launch gliders correctly follow the the, the building instructions that uh, Bob Stalick explained, the details that I talked about in the, you know, when I, when I talked in the beginning, and, and then do the, the trim on the ground by test gliding it kind of hard to the right, you can get this really close to being contest ready within five throws. I have literally gone to contest and on the second throw started competing in a contest. So it's all a matter of getting it right on the ground and then it's easy from that point. So we're gonna have Sam do another one with this. Don't forget and reset the DT on it. So it comes down and we'll see how that goes. And just for information for the video, Sam is a junior at Napa High School? Sophomore. I'm a sophomore. Sophomore at Napa High School. He is a member of the Napa Phantoms, the famous youth airplane club in Napa under the tutelage of Rocco Ferrario. Nice launch. So it's coming around. 
it's coming into the wind and what we're looking for is it's not stalling now it's penetrating with that extra nose weight it's penetrating better and it's going into its right turn and now it just DT'd but it looks like we're really close to being in trim at this point so here we are back uh, Sam just retrieved the glider upon observing the third launch we have the proper nose weight, the proper amount of incidence, and proper turn. This airplane is contest ready. It is ready to fly. And just to review a few things I talked about in the beginning, just make sure that you have your wing glued on a tiny bit to the direction of the turn. So if it's turning right, like this one does, if you're right-handed, the glider's gonna turn right. And you should have that just a teeny bit a 64th or a 70th of an inch to the right and the and the back in the middle your stabilizer skew is going to be right at about a 16th of an inch and your balance point is going to be right around 50 percent you do your hard launch uh, test glide launch if the nose comes up around the back side you're okay on incidents and you're ready to throw and all we had to do was a little bit of fine tuning we had a, had to add a little bit of nose weight we had to change the rudder just a teeny bit and we put some some weight on the tip sometimes you have to put the weight on the tip to compensate for the extra reinforcement on the on the throwing side and that's what we had to do so this glider is is not a fancy one you can buy these uh, for a reasonable price and 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 when you get out there and fly your first hand launch glider and put it in a thermal it is it is just one of the coolest feelings that you could ever have and anybody can do this this is this glider is ready to go my recommendation is and I don't know if I'm allowed to do an advertisement here you can cut this out if you want but Stan Budenbaum has excellent kits excellent supplies and he only sells the best designs and he only sells the best materials and the best instructions so if you want to kind of have a foolproof plan to get the, a, a good starter glider, contact Stan Budenbaum and he, he will set you up with something at a reasonable cost.